morning, everyone. We're so excited that you've joined us here at the Water's Edge. And if you're online with us today, you can check us out on Facebook or YouTube and feel free to like, share, and comment. And if you're live with us today, here's a few things we'd like you to know. We have nursery and kids church available right across in the lobby. And also, we're always in need of volunteers, so if you want to get plugged in, you can email us at watersedgevolunteer at gmail.com or you can check your contact info to 337-352-2443. And remember, if you know anyone that's struggling, please invite them to church or share our online content with them because this is a place where broken people belong and everyone is welcome. We have a full experience for you guys this morning, so get ready to worship with the Water's Edge Band and receive a message from Pastor Tony. Oh 
a burden But too long on my own I wasn't created To bear it alone I hear your invitation To let it all go And I see it now, laying it down. And I know that I need you. I run to the Father, fall into grace. Done with the hiding, no reason to wait. My heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend. So I run to the Father again and again and again and again. Oh, 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 oh. You saw my condition. I had a plan from the start. Your son for redemption, the price for my heart. And I don't have a context for that kind of love. I don't understand, I can't comprehend all I
What's up everyone? Good morning and welcome to our online Water's Edge Sunday morning worship experience. Once again, like we tell you every week, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Thank you so much for tuning in. For those of you that continue to share these online digital worship experiences with your friends and family, thank you so much for doing that. We have people tuning in from all over the place. Also, this is very important. For those of you that are meeting our $10 challenge and you're giving, Thank you for those of you that are already tithing and giving above and beyond. Thank you so much for your generosity. It helps us love more people, help more people, serve more people, and feed more people. Continue to do that as we become a ministry machine in our city. Okay, so sometimes life will catch you off guard, and when it does, we have to learn how to connect the dots. Today, we begin a brand new series entitled Connecting the Dots, and let me just explain that to you in this way. Sometimes in our life, and during certain seasons of our life, we're only given some of the picture. Some of the picture, and maybe just a few of the dots to connect. Some of the picture in this relationship, some of the picture about our future, some of the picture about this very difficult decision that we absolutely need to make, some of the picture about why we experience this hurt, why we experience this betrayal, why we experience this pain. It's almost like in this life, we're given this entire canvas, but on that canvas, we don't have a picture. We just have a few of the dots. And here's the issue for most of us. In the beginning, when we're trying to connect the dots, sometimes it takes us a while to figure things out. Have you ever felt like that in this life? Like it's taken you a while to figure things out with this situation, with this relationship, with this picture about what is going on in your life. Sometimes it just takes us a while and it takes patience to clearly see what's really happening to our heart and what's really happening to our faith and what's really happening to our relationships and our relationship with God. But what happens when this picture becomes more clear in your life? In this picture, whatever it is, deep down, when it becomes more clear, you know this is not what I wanted this picture to look like or I don't think this picture is going to turn out the way I was hoping or the way I was dreaming. Maybe this picture is not going to turn out the way that I wanted it to be. And maybe when you first started to connect the dots, you thought that this situation, this circumstance, this relationship, this marriage, this storm, this this opportunity, the final picture was going to look a lot different. Maybe it was going to look better, more hopeful, more peaceful. But maybe that's not the way that it's playing out for you. Maybe as you're starting to connect more of the dots, you're starting to see that the final picture is really not going to be what you wanted. It's not going to be what you hoped. And instead of a source of peace, maybe as the picture is starting to connect the dots, it's becoming a source of uncertainty for you. For instance, at the beginning of every relationship, any type of relationship with any type of person, you are only given a few of the dots to connect. I tell people all the time, you only know about people what they want you to know and what they allow you to know. And so in any type of relationship, when it first starts, you're only given a few of the dots. And in our mind, we take those few dots and we start to paint this magnificent picture. It's fantastic picture, like it's the Mona Lisa. But what happens many times in life is that we start to fill in so many blanks with assumptions. We're given a few of the dots, and then we paint this wonderful picture of how we think it's going to turn out. And then all of a sudden, we start to fill in these blanks with assumptions. And so I always tell people, in any type of situation, and notice this, if you're still with me, say I'm still with you. When you're connecting the dots, there are so many things that you just don't know yet. When you're connecting the dots, there's so many things that you just don't know yet about the future, that you just don't know yet about that person in your life, that you just don't know yet about this opportunity or about this circumstance or about this relationship. For example, if you don't know how someone fights when they argue, then you don't really know them. And so this would be an example of connecting more of the dots as you go along. Sometimes, I need to tell you this, sometimes it's okay to not create that final picture in your head and sometimes it's okay just to let these dots play out. And so in this series, I want us to learn how to connect the dots in our life when our life is very confusing. But I also want us to learn how sometimes we don't need to create this final picture in our head and we just need to let these dots play out. And so well, the reason why we need to do this is because when this happens, life won't catch us off guard so many times. Life won't hurt our heart so many times and hurt our faith and hurt our story. Now, some people listening today feel like life is pretty good. 
Other people listening today feel like life is very confusing and hard, but that's not the only person tuning in today. That's not the only person listening today. There's another group of people. And for this group of people, it feels like their life is just a little bit more complicated. They can't describe it as good. They can't really describe it as always difficult and hard. And so it's somewhere in the middle. It's complicated. And this is why. The reason why so many people feel like their life is a little bit more complicated is because their life is puzzling and their life is confusing, almost like a puzzle, like it's in pieces. And oftentimes, I found that my life is best described in this way. Sometimes it's in pieces. My life isn't great all the time, and it's not difficult all the time. My life isn't hard all the time, and it's not easy all the time. But many times, I simply find that my life is sort of puzzling, and sometimes it's confusing. Most of the time, there are dots or parts of my life that are going really, really okay, really, really great. At the same time, there are other dots or pieces in my life that that are confusing to me, heartbreaking to me, frustrating to me, exhausting to me, and puzzling to me. Some pieces of my life are wonderful while others are tough. Some pieces are peaceful while others are scary. Some pieces are easy while others a part of my life are difficult. And sometimes it's really hard to see the final picture and sometimes it's really hard to connect the dots. How do I make sense of this? How do I overcome this? How do I deal with this? How do I handle this? How do I figure this out? How do I figure this out with God in my life? How do I make this fit into the main picture of my life? And life this way, when life is this way, it really does unsettle you and I on the inside. So many times you and I feel unsettled because we cannot connect the dots. When our life is puzzling, when our life is falling apart, when our life is difficult and troubled, you have to stay focused on who you can be. Peace, hope, purpose, love, joy, being like Jesus. Because if you don't stay focused, then you will not remain a loving person and a peaceful person and a joyful person and a Christ-like person. And when this happens, it hurts your faith and your story. Being a child of God is much bigger than anything this world could ever offer us. And that will always be who we are. That will always be who we are, children of God in this life. Even when life hurts, it'll always be who we are. We are children of God. There will come a time in your life when it feels like everything is in pieces and falling apart. Life will be difficult and puzzling and confusing, and it seems like you just can't connect the dots. And you will start to lose some things that you deeply, deeply cherish in this life. You'll lose love. You'll lose trust. You can lose a job. You can lose your health. You can lose your reputation. You can lose your possessions. And it's in these times, if you don't don't know exactly who you are in God and who you are to Jesus, then your life will continue to fall apart, be in pieces, and you will have a hard time connecting those dots because when your circumstances are in pieces and you lose what you cherish in life, it's in those times when you better know who you are to Jesus and you better know who you are to God. If you're still with me, Sam's I'm still with you. We will go through seasons in this life when things feel like they're just falling to pieces and this is when you and I start to buy into lies. This is when our emotions lie to us and our thoughts lie to us and our mind lies to us when your heart and your mind and your life is filled with stress and depression and hopelessness and impatience and sadness if you're not careful you'll start to believe this and notice this today if you're still with me say I'm still with you this is just who I am but you have to understand that to Jesus that is not who you are no way this is only how you are when you lose sight of of who you are in Jesus. Let me say that again. That's just how you are when you lose sight of who you are in Jesus. And who are you to God? Loved? Hold on to that. Paid for by his blood in the cross? Hold on to that. Adopted as his own? Hold on to that. A child in his name? Forgiven and accepted? Hold on to that. And how empty and discouraging is it when you live your life with no direction. Notice what the prophet Jeremiah says about how sometimes our life can just be confusing. Like we have a hard time connecting the dots. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 14. I'm reading out of the message translation today. He says, God, pick up the pieces. Put me back together again. You are my praise. Right here, Jeremiah says, God, my life is in pieces. It's puzzling. It's very difficult. I need your help to help me connect the dots. I need your help to put me back together again. I can't see the final picture, and it's unsettling me on the inside. God, without you, my life will always look like this. Stress, worry, hopelessness, impatience, depression, sadness. But Jesus, with you, I can finally see the overall picture. I can finally see what my life should look like 
and who I am and how I can be. Now, when your life is having a hard time connecting the dots, this not only affects you, but it also affects the other people and the relationships in your life. And so your life will always feel like it's in pieces when you have trouble and tension in your relationships with other people. You will never have joy, you'll never have peace, and you'll never be happy. This will always make you feel like your life is falling apart when you're at odds with other people in your life, in your relationships. It's always gonna make you feel like things are just in pieces. And so because of that, Notice this today. If you're still with me, say I'm still with you. When your relationships are in pieces, what counts is not just who you are. In that moment, what counts is how you are. If you're not patient, you will never connect those dots. And the same is true for our life when it's in pieces. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, and patience. This is what our life should look like. This is what our life is supposed to look like. This is a better story than what our old life was telling this world. Being gentle and patient may not be who you are right now, but you still can decide that it should be how you are. Being peaceful and kind, you may not feel like that's who you are right now, but you still better decide that that's how you're going to be. Being joyful and forgiving, maybe that's not who you are right now, but it can still be how you are. And so many times we think this, I can never change how I am until I change who I am. And that's another lie. Let me say that again. So many people believe this. I can never change how I am until I first change who I am. The church has even taught us that for years. You can't change who you are. You can't change how you are until you change who you are. And, and people say, I've been this way for so long that it's just impossible to change. It's impossible. When in reality, that's not true at all. The Bible actually teaches that it works in the exact opposite way. And this is what I mean. If you want to change who you are, then start by changing how you are. Jesus even says, I reveal myself to people after they obey. When everything in you is screaming to be angry, to lash out and to be panicked, be gentle anyway. When everything in you is screaming to stress out, to bury yourself in sadness and to not forgive, be loving anyway. When everything in you is screaming to give up, to quit and to run away, have some faith and have some endurance and have some love and faith anyway. Amen. There needs to come a time in our life when we stop using the excuse, well, this is just who I am. No, sadly, this is just how you are when you lose sight of who you are to Jesus. And who does God say that you are? Let's look at his word today. John 15, 13. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for his friends. This is who you are. Jesus calls you a friend. 1 John 5, 4. For every child of God defeats this evil world and we achieve this victory through our faith. Right here, the scripture says that you're a child of God and you have victory over your struggles in this world because of your faith in Christ. Ephesians 1, 5. God God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. We're adopted by God. We are God's family. Now, have you ever been given a label? And deep down, that label cuts you deeper than you ever knew, or maybe you ever led on to other people. Shy, boring, weak, annoying, ugly, liar, crazy unstable, naive, too young, too old, failure. These labels have a way of controlling how we see ourselves and how we love and hate ourselves. These labels have a way of controlling how we relate to other people and how we survive this life. These labels have a way of controlling that. And the reality is they even did this with Jesus. They gave him labels. He's from Nazareth. He's just a carpenter. We know his family. We know where he came from. How can he help us connect with God? How can he help us connect the dots? When Jesus began to preach about the kingdom, people made fun of him. People got offended. People scoffed at him. He's a nobody, just a carpenter from Nazareth. Have you ever been given a label that has cut you deeply? And what has been said about you that's not okay, that has hurt you? And then, of course, Jesus, after they give him all these labels, they arrest him, they beat him, they torture him, and then they publicly murder him on the cross. For the disciples, it felt like their world was falling apart. We used to have all the dots. Now everything has changed, and we only have a few of the dots, and we have no idea what's going on in our life. But then after the pain, after the hurt, after the darkness, after the crucifixion, after the burial, Jesus rises from the dead And more of those dots began to get connected. And when the disciples started to see the overall picture, that's when they had to ask and answer this new question. 
now that their life is different. Who am I going to be now? And how am I going to be now in Jesus? Faith is when you refuse to let go of God, even though your world is falling apart. You refuse to let go of God, even though there's hurt there. You refuse to let go of God, even though there's confusion there. You refuse to let go of God, even though there's pain there, and there's guilt there, and there's wounds there, and there's a scars, and there's scars there. You refuse to let go of God, even when you cannot connect the dots and see the overall picture. But when your world is crashing down on you, why should you have faith to endure? What will be your new reason to sing again and worship again and walk with God again and stay alive again and stand back up again? Well, this is the reason that we stay faithful when life is falling apart. This is the reason that we endure and hold on to God when life is falling apart. This is the reason. And notice this today. If you're still with me, say I'm still with you. Endurance is produced by experience. I endure. I have faith because God has made himself real to me. I endure and I hold on to my faith because I've had some very personal experiences with Jesus that has changed my heart and softened my heart and has really gotten me over so much pain. I endure because God always shows up in the aftermath of my hurt and my heartache. Faith is when you feel defeated and dead, but you keep going anyway. Faith is when you feel discouraged and depressed, but you keep going anyway. Faith is when you don't see it, feel it, or have any answers, or connect the dots, and you keep going anyway. If the storm is here, then who will you be now? And how will you be now? And how will you go forward? One of the main things that we do is we have faith, and faith is endurance, and we hold on to God until the dots start connecting. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Thank you so much for tuning in. We absolutely love you. We want to remind you that our in-person live services are back 9.30 and 11.15. Come and join us if you're a local listener. We cannot wait to see you back next week, and we love you all. What a great message from Pastor Tony. We really hope today's worship experience has encouraged you and helped you in some way today. And if you're moved by today's service and want to stay tuned the rest of the week to social media, you can check us out at Water's Edge Gathering on Facebook or Water's Edge underscore LC on Instagram. You can also download our app where you can do online giving, listen to online worship songs, and replay messages from Pastor Tony. If you want to learn more about salvation and baptism, want to volunteer, or need a prayer request, you can visit our Welcome Center in the lobby, and our wonderful volunteers will take down your information. We absolutely love you guys and can't wait to see you back at the Water's Edge, a place where everyone is welcome.